Welcome to One on One with the Grim One. I am your host, the Slayer of Poses, the most electrifying man in corpse entertainment with the most, the Necro Sexual. And joining me on this morbid talk, we have John McKenty and Kyle Severn from the Death Metal Originators Incantation. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. <laughs> How the hell are you perverts tonight? Good. Yeah, we're doing okay. We yeah. had a day, a long day of playing metal, and um, yeah, now we're ready to party. <laughs> Rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> I see you guys have the drum rigs of doom in the background. Were you pounding out some furious beats earlier? <laughs> yeah, we've been rocking all day, actually. What have you guys been rocking out on? Metal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah just a lot of stuff we're, yeah. we're a bunch of bunch of stuff we're working on so mixture between new material and older material just brushing up on you know just getting some metal done i'm glad you guys are together and slaying at home pounding out the beats and maybe cranking out some isley brother tunes along the way <laughs> yep this is one-on-one -on -one with the grim one so that means that in addition to talking about your recent mental exploits, like your upcoming Incantation album, our guests will also select one album that holds a special place in their hearts. What album did you select to talk about? I selected uh, Possess Seven Churches. Oh, good. It's, um, yeah, just, I mean, when it came out, it kicked my ass. I didn't know what the hell was going on, you know? I mean, that's the kind of impact that I like in an album, especially when I was younger and you hear something that's just so, so much sicker than everything else you heard before and just over the top and it was evil sounding and just, you know, it basically was part of what changed my life into doing what I do now with metal, you know, if it wasn't for um, Possessed, you know, maybe, maybe my stuff would be a lot wimpier. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's, it's it's i mean there's a lot of albums that hold special place but that's kind of like the the first one that really crushed my brain in that way you know the creme de la grim you could say yeah <laughs> and yeah. i saw kyle gave you the nod of approval so i'm happy yeah. that seven churches is also kyle severn approval well, i remember i bought it strictly for the cover <clears throat> you know the days you know i got just my allowance i could buy one record a week and it was like on the end cap or whatnot in, in the my local record store, and I said, "Oh fuck, I gotta get this." And then took it all, and I was fucking blown away. Yeah. Yeah, you just do that. You know that it was gonna <laughs> piss everybody off. You yeah. know, and that's the way metal's supposed to be. You know. It was a double bonus. The <laughs> yeah, cover was badass, and then the music just blew me away. I think yeah. of images of like hell and fire and those bleak tones, and it definitely matched the album artwork. Yeah, absolutely. That's all it yeah. needed. You know. It just, it looked, it looked satanic. <laughs> and it certainly sounds satanic. Yeah. I, I actually didn't buy my copy. My cop, my friend bought a copy and two, two inserts came in there. So he gave me one of them. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, so i actually, my version of, I still kept it. It's just, all it is, is the insert with the record. And, um, yeah, I just brought it home and listened to it. And I didn't know, um, I didn't know what to think at first. I was just like, this is really evil and it was really killer and it, it blew me away. But at the same time, it was so far ahead of its time. And I would, my brain wasn't able to soak it all in the first time, but I knew there was something about it that just made me want to listen to it over and over again and understand, you know, what this, um, you know, havoc that I was listening to was, um, all about, you know? So, you know, it was just, um, you know, it took it took probably about, you know, five listens until I really started to even start picking up what's going on. But, I mean, it was so evil. It was just like, I mean, like, I got it pretty close to around the time it came out. So, it was like, there just wasn't anything that evil. I mean, there was Venom and there was Slayer and Exodus and stuff. But this was something that's just a little bit more demonic and sick. So, you know, it, it definitely... Um, Definitely crushed my brain, and then since then it's been like I said, a cornerstone uh, stone in everything that I write. I mean, um, 
you know, it's always, it's always there. Cause that's one of the, uh, that's, that's one of the most important to me, the most important bands in the formation of death metal. I mean, yeah, that album really isn't a hundred percent death metal, but death metal wasn't around before it. And they coined the term. And that, and that was like the starting point for what other bands were to do. It's, it's like super important, you know? And that was one of my other questions that you answered. Of course, this is top tier geeky metalhead discussions, but if you want to get in an argument about linguistics, do you think that Possessed was in fact the first death metal band, which I think they are. You coined the term, you create the genre, but more importantly, <laughs> they had the brutality to back it up. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, they were the first first band. I mean, there were yeah, other really important bands, but I mean, Possessed was really the one. Yeah, they coined the term and they also started like their style started what became um you know say bands like death and necrophagia whatever band you know every band at that time listened to possess that plays death metal i don't know any band from the 80s that played death metal that didn't like worship the ground possessed walked on so i mean it's obvious that they're the creators you know yeah let's give it to them <laughs> yeah i mean you know it's like um it's like venom is the first black metal band i mean come okay. on black metal i mean Absolutely. yeah they made a song black metal if they didn't come up the song <laughs> black metal maybe yeah. it wouldn't be black yeah, metal if you're gonna get possessed death metal you gotta give metal black metal of course <laughs> yeah it's Boom. breaking news yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bunch of old dudes there. yeah yeah then there <laughs> join us next week when we discuss megadeth versus metallica you know really topical <laughs> stuff <laughs> But yes, I'm also of that mindset. They were innovators and they coined the terms, both bands, Venom and Possessed. And even though uh, they sounded differently than the death metal or the black metal that would come to follow, they definitely inspired them. And that album is ahead of its time. I think you hit it on the head, John. It was an album that when I listened to as well, I knew it was brutal, but I was a little bit, I didn't know what to make of it because it was so like kind of primitive, but also technical at the same time. And they were just, they were young lads. I think that they were, what, like 17, 18, 19 years old? They were all very young. They are still in school at the time, yeah. Yeah, like that's some pretty brutal shit. On the record, so, fuck. I was yeah. So <laughs> you can tell that album, Seven Churches, is fueled by Satan and Raging Hormones. It definitely explains it if yeah, they were they, still schoolboys at that age. Now is exactly, you know, exactly how we were growing up. We just wanted to be assholes and just, you know, listen to the sickest thing out there and just uh, tell everybody to fuck off. And that was, you know, perfect music to do that to, you know, inspire us to be assholes more than we already are. <laughs> the apple has fallen close to the present <laughs> It's an evil album and it kicks straight off with the exorcists. Definitely one of the most evil intros of all time with the tubular bells from the motion picture, the exorcist before yeah. this kicks off full speed and from there it doesn't really relent again no it's great do you guys have a favorite song off that album i like all the songs really it's it's, there's not really uh, i've known it for so long i look at it as one whole yeah you know what i mean it's hard hard to say i mean you don't just put one song off of that record you put the record i listen to the whole record (laughs) there's roto toms on there and i I was you know what i mean i was a fan because i had roto toms i was like holy fuck i never heard them used like this you know that aggressive (laughs) i'm like they're fucking roto toms i had them uh, you know play rock and roll and stuff so you know that that was cool i mean that was unique yeah yes it's as a drummer's point of view, you know, um, and knowing that it's kind of sloppy, but you're loving it. Cause I'm like, Oh, I'm just a kid too. And I play sloppy. So like, <laughs> they can do it. And I got a record out. Oh, I might actually be able to do something in music. <laughs> yeah. And I'm still getting away with playing sloppy. So <laughs> thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, <laughs> fuck, there's just so many amazing moments. I mean, that, um riff um you know high riff in the exorcist is amazing i mean throughout that album they have really good higher riffs that you know they have, the, they have of course they have the lower really dark riffs but they have a lot of higher stuff and a lot of like cool scale stuff that just um just you know i think is really even though they were the first band to play death metal that was a unique thing to put put in some of that stuff that you wouldn't necessarily expect in a um you know, a death metal um, album. I mean, we've used 
that those high, um, you know, things in our songs too. I mean, a direct influence from Possessed. I mean, there's no, there's no hiding it. If we said we, if we said we never heard Possessed, people would just be telling <laughs> we're lying, you know. So why not just say plus, yeah? Plus we covered Swing of the Axe. So yeah, we did. We covered the song Swing of the Axe. Oh, so. was that Possessed? Uh, yeah. The worship is in line. And indeed, especially from a drumming perspective, one of my favorite parts of that album that I listened to is in the song Twisted Minds. This is like bizarre drum fill where he does like a cymbal flourish and then keeps thrashing. So it's oh, like, yeah. and of course, in the same thing with The Exorcist, they have that really abrupt like snare fill, <laughs> like after every verse in the, in the, in the verse. So, yeah, actually, when I first um, started in Cam what was it um with paul ledney the original uh, drummer the reason why i wanted him in the band is because he reminded me of possessed drumming you know style when he when i when i he was actually jamming with me in my former band revenant we were looking for trying out drummers and we i played some of the revenant songs and he had like a possessed sound to his drum playing and i was just like holy fuck it's like this is just perfect you know like I knew that this was the person I had to start a band with, you know? So the, um, you know, it's, like I said, it's been a cornerstone in, in, um, incantation. I mean, um, I mean, ba yeah, basically one of the biggest bonding things that it was originally with Paul was, and myself was the, um, was our possessed worship that we had, you know, and wrote songs that, yeah, I totally had, he, he made the songs that I, probably wrote for Revenant that I wanted to sound like Possessed, but didn't sound like Possessed. He made him sound like Possessed, and I was like, wow, this is great. <laughs> I mean, what else do you need? If, if it sounds close to Possessed or anywhere in that ballpark, you're doing fine. Indeed, and I also spoke with Paul Ledney within the last year for my Necrosexual print edition online for my blog. So it was excellent to catch up with some heavy metal history from him. And we'll yeah, touch up. Great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And likewise, I also spoke with Kevin Sharp from Brutal Truth. So we're hitting all the forefathers and pioneers of extreme metal. And of course, John, he spoke very highly of uh, your DIY tour that I guess you helped book out in the Midwest uh, like 30 years ago. <laughs> the Punch and Stench tour was, I think it was <clears throat> Punch and Stench and uh, Brutal Truth. Us. I think I forget. Yeah. It was fun times. We had a lot of fun times back then. Yes, swinging the old axe on the road, baby. Yeah, but back then we had to do a lot of a lot of the booking ourselves. It was crazy oh, times, you know. Yeah. Really, throughout the '90s, really, a lot of times we had to book our own stuff, you know, our own tours because people didn't want to give us the time of day. Sometimes we're touring, so we say, "Fuck it, we just do it on our own," you know. It's crazy the amount of how we just got contacts and just called up promoters. Yeah, we just call up on a phone yeah. and say, "Like, want to play a show? Yeah, we're gonna be coming through Nashville on this date." Got somewhere we can play? <laughs> sure, fifty bucks. <laughs> we'll be there. <laughs> he just showed up. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I think that's another thing that I've admired about you, John, and also Kyle. In Incantation, you're an institution that's been around for three decades, and you were pioneers of not just the brutality, but a lot of that do-it-yourself work ethic. And then also, John, you even took the do-it-yourself mentality to eventually becoming the front man. <laughs> Of incantation. Kyle helped me with that. I didn't want to do it. Kyle actually um, told me, like, he's like, he's not doing it. Kyle <laughs> refused to do it and said, like, one of us has to do it because <clears throat> yeah. we're not going to leave, you know? So we, we got sick of just not having a permanent vocalist. And it's like, if one of us does it, cause we're not going anywhere. We, we have to just do it. And I was like, I'm not doing it. So that leaves you. I'll help you. <laughs> Yeah. I'll coach you. He, does, I'll, yeah. you know, he actually you. <laughs> he actually helped me a lot with all. I mean, still to this day, but especially back then, just helping me do it because I was so self conscious. I didn't want to do it. I never had the will to want to be a front man. Um, no, you know, but I, I he was right. We had I had to do it because yeah. I was just fucking sick of you know revolving door vocalists that's yep. you know and it, luckily it worked out now it's fine but yeah. back then it really sucked to do i was yeah, who would have thought thinking, i mean i really didn't think he'd be able to pull it off <laughs> <laughs> but he told me so if, i mean if you if you knew john back then he you know he spoke with a higher voice and 
mean, he was younger too, but you know, I mean, we just never would have pictured it. I mean, I had it was faith fun. that he could do it, but you know, I was like, holy fuck, this is gonna be a lot of work. The, 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 I think the real the real <laughs> test, though, I knew that it was good was when um, Seth Putnam seen us play in um, what was it? Uh, I was it? I forget if it was Boston or something like that, and he came. He came, came out the Providence. Yeah, you know, Providence show. Yeah, came out yeah. the Providence show. See us play. It was actually a pungent stench, and um, yeah, he was surprised. He was like, because he went, he went there. He he was going there just to kind of make fun of me, you know, say it was gonna yeah. suck or whatever, you know. And he after the show, he was just like, "That's pretty damn good." <laughs> damn. Yeah, he was like, he's like, no I was songs like, about John." I was like, I was, I was expecting you to come out and like sound like Caton from Hyrax or something, you know. <laughs> So it was, I was kind of happy, you know. Once I once I got the approval from Seth, I was like, okay, that's cool. Because if anyone was going to tease me about it, it would have been Seth, you know. Yeah, you know, you've made I it. Hard at it, man. He worked real hard. I, I about a good year and a half. Yeah, it was a long time. Yeah, just uh, every day, just melting it out. Just imagine like going from nothing to you know being able to growl, like not being able to growl at all. You know, or do any kind of those vocals and learn patterns and play yeah, the guitar. Yeah, the All that. The whole once thing I got, about it. You yeah, know? once I got to do the – once I was able to do the vocals, I still couldn't play and do vocals. So yeah. I had to practice that aspect of it and you know. still do it as well as not, you know, playing. Because when you play and you do vocals, it's a lot of work as far as, you know, being able to still play the riffs properly and, <laughs> you know, do the uh, power that you need in the vocals. So, yeah, it was a bitch. And then I need to step in and start doing more structures because, of course, then he's going to want to do structures that follow the guitar only to make it easier. Yeah, so he so comes there and makes them harder for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the old Hetfield Ulrich connection. <laughs> but in the end, I mean, like you said, I mean, <clears throat> we're going uh, – it's 2003, so – That's a long time. Yeah, wow. 15 years, longer, strong. You know, wow. probably it's crazy. Yeah, 18 years. 18 years, yeah. yeah. And you know you've made it when you get the approval from Seth Putnam, the ultimate <laughs> grindcore yeah. troll. Yeah. And Kyle, you know that you've made it as a drummer when Seth Putnam writes a song about your mustache. <laughs> well, he doesn't write a song about his drum playing. He writes no. about his mustache. <laughs> but he invites me to play drums on the record. <laughs> but, yeah. I think uh, I think he liked it because it reminded him of the village people or something. That's fucked up. <laughs> yeah. No, Kyle, I'll give you a lot of credit because this was this was before the hipster mustache really made a comeback. So you were kind of like on the lone frontier there for a while in terms yeah, of the stash. True, yeah. yeah. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle Diamond really. Yeah, Kyle yeah. was doing it before, yeah. The hipsters yeah. for sure. Everybody was all trendy and <clears throat> I think they all just looked at Kyle and was like, We gotta get a mustache too. <laughs> Especially the drummers, they're probably like, I want to play better drums. Let me get a mustache. <laughs> if I get a mustache, maybe Seth Red song off me too. Yeah, well, it didn't come that easy. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the inspiration behind the new Incantation album. Uh, new, the inspiration? Um, <clears throat> to write a good album. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think just the writing process for this was any different than any other record. <clears throat> I mean, just like we're doing now, you know, we're using the time. We just John goes through spurts, like it'll just start writing like fucking crazy. <clears throat> we have to get it all out, get it on tape, and and then um, it, yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah. those, the songs, I mean, they're years old. Yeah, a lot, a lot of songs on the album are actually. Like, some could be even up to five years old, a yeah. few of them that never got used for some of the um, like, previous albums. Because yeah. we always write a lot of material for each album. It just, it, it, it's so easy to come up with material when you have four people in the band writing music <laughs> and stuff that, you know, we have, we have a bunch of like leftover parts and stuff and they were good. It just, you know, when you write up, when you have enough for a full album, you sometimes have to just put stuff aside and just say, okay, we'll go back to this later. So some of the songs were, were older ones that we uh, kind of refurbished, I guess. And then there was uh, three or so that I wrote after uh, Profane Nexus was recorded and mixed because there was a long delay between there. So it was a couple like was inspired to write after that. And then, yeah, almost all the songs were written at least. The last one was written by 
three year, two two years yeah. ago because we yeah. recorded the drums two years yeah. ago for the album. It just took us two years to find enough time to finish up the album because we've been on tour so much. We had so many tours that we had no time to uh, get you know back to finishing the album until you know he finally just forced it. <laughs> Once the summer, we're like, we have to finish this album, get it done with because. We want to write more material, but we can't. We, we're like we have we want to get this album done first before we do anything else, and we just work at it. And um, I don't know. I think I think um, it all came together well. It was just um, it took a little bit of time to get back into the vibe of it because when you record an album, you know, drums two years ago, and then you get back into it, it's, it's it takes a little bit of time <laughs> to like get back into yeah. the vibe because you're like you know, it's it's just a little weird yeah. but we, we made it work and it came out okay and I, I the reaction has been really good for the album and uh once i heard the the mix from dan swano on the album i was like okay this is a good sounding album because you get so lost in it when you write it you just do the best you can you just try to get the best feeling you can but at a certain point you say like fuck it just um you know send it to mix see what happens my favorite song is Entrails of the Hag Queen. I made sure I played that one for my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's a good um, one for your grandma. <laughs> yeah. Nice lyrics. Yeah. Do you guys have a favorite song off your new album? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Let's take a look it's, here. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's hard. To, it, it's always tough to pick a favorite song, you know? I mean, I, I do like Entrails. Um, we were jamming on that a little bit today as well. I think, what's the one Chuck wrote? One of these? Uh, the old number nine? Yeah, Black Four of Them's Fire, yeah. Yeah, that one, I think that's probably... That's one a good one. Favorite. That one's really good. I like the pro tits, or... Uh, Propitiation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our working name is pro tits. <clears throat> but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, the one we did the lyric video for. That, that one's really good. Um, I, I'm a big fan of our more mid-tempo and the Doom stuff. I mean, I like the fast, but I, I like playing it. I, I like listening to the more. <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't know. I, it's, it's hard, hard to say. It's a good I, record. I, I mean. think I think, <laughs> it, I think it came out good. I, I like the fact that it, ha it definitely has a lot of um, cool, I don't know, all right, we're like rhythms to it. Like it's real dark rhythms to it, a lot of textures to it. So yeah. for me, it's, it's really cool. I, I wanted, I, at least on my part of it, I wanted to have a very uh, old school meat and potatoes kind of vibe to it, but at the same time still have some interesting Spice. stuff going on to it. You know, yeah. I enjoy it because it has that classic incantation sound, but it also shows you guys have some new tricks up your sleeve. You throw some curveballs in there. And you guys strike that balance between the old and the new. Yeah, well, we never set out. I mean, we don't know what's the hit songs or what songs are popular, you know. And we just, <clears throat> they're all the same to us, or we wouldn't have wrote them and recorded them, you know. So I think we just kind of keep that same, you know, yep. well-oiled machine oiled up and same formula and yeah, I mean, write what we like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I if we're going to do uh, incantation music, we have to remember why we do it in the first place for, you know, and really it's for ourselves. And we have to also just remember, you know, what the band's about and if we want to even, you know, do it or not, because if we want to do something totally different, that's new, we'll just do something totally different and new. We don't need to do it as incantation, but, um, we got plenty of other bands, you know, yeah, but if there's something that doesn't fit in the realm of incantation music, but we, we just, we kind of know, you know, it's yeah. just, we just, it just, um, yeah, we, I mean, we've always kind of forged our own path from the beginning, so it's really simple for us to just keep that same concept going on, saying, tell everybody, piss off, you know, we're doing what we, we do. It's really actually a, a really punk rock kind of attitude that we have, where it's just like, piss off, if you don't like it, fuck off, and, you know, if you're, it's like, you know, if you want to be a poser and not like it, okay, be a poser and not like it, but it's not our problem, you know? I can't stop people from being posers. I can only give them music to not be a poser to. Well, you could stop them. I mean, you know. Yeah, you can kill them like a poser. Yeah, like, yeah, I mean, Paul Bailoff would do that. Oh, good old friendly, violent fun, baby. Yeah, he coined that term, didn't he? Yeah. 
Do you hear yourselves in a lot of newer bands these days? Now I do. Yeah. Yeah, because there seems to be a lot more. Um, yeah, in the last few years. <clears throat> and uh, Yeah, we notice it. Yeah. I mean, it's... It, Some of it's good. It's, it's, a it's, lot of it's good. It's obvious. <laughs> I mean... It's weird. It's weird to uh, hear other bands play music that's so similar to your own music that is different than anything that <laughs> happened before us. You know, so it's kind of a weird, a weird thing. I mean, it, it, it's still weird to me sometimes. But sometimes they, they are good ones. There are some bands that do the style really well. Yeah. I, for me, I think it's important for any band if they're gonna use it as an influence or not to always put their own spin on it and remember that you have to put your own personality into music regardless of what it is if you want to do anything that is um you know substantial instead of just being a you know cover band you know i mean you know i mean maybe if they if they really just like us that much then you know okay you do a cover band but it's better if you want to have a serious band you should have some of your own flavor in it too and a lot do you know so that makes the scene uh, better and stuff you know what's the difference being <clears throat> influence and just copying you know what i mean <clears throat> but you know it's it's um an honor too to have to, to think that our sound is influential i mean uh, i don't think any of us ever thought that you know it, we would be influential yeah. with especially not through the early 2000s no yeah yeah <laughs> it was yeah we had some really rough years <laughs> in the 2000s but um yeah but you know it's it's really nice uh, that bands use this as an influence i mean that's a uh, you know kind of the highest honor as a songwriter and musician that you could have i mean um you know we've had we have numerous albums in our catalog that are extremely influential to a lot of different bands i mean that's that's pretty damn cool actually you know what have you guys been listening to lately my go-to is just you know old heavy metal and hard rock uh <clears throat> that that's my go-to's i mean i play incantation all day long <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> but uh but there's a lot of good you know i've been turned on to a lot of uh newer bands as well <clears throat> uh and i like them you know and um I mean, right now, my stack that I got sitting here, I've been listening to Alcatraz, Steeler, that's us, and new uh, Carnegie record, and Eli Roth, and uh, Michael Shanker. So, give me a taste of what I've been jamming the last couple times I've played records. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, um, as far as, like, newer stuff, I, I really like that Perdition Temple uh, release. I don't know if you've heard that. That's really, that's uh, Gene who used to play with Angel Corpse's band. And um, that one, the one you played me, the Mortiferum. Yeah, Mortiferum. Mortiferum or the something. The album that looks like it's made out of ramen noodles. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's a good one. That's a good album. Um, I checked out uh, a live uh, stream from like the rehearsal room of, undergang and i thought that was really good that undergang um was really oh. sounded really killer it reminded me kind of like a really old school carcass or something and i like sure. that i like that dirty ass yeah they keep that raw edge, raw edge carcass yeah. you know like live you know, and yeah just like just, just yeah so it's, that, that was a really yeah. good one for sure yeah there's, there's some good yeah. stuff coming out you know yeah. Char for sure. charlie's man skeletal remnants or remains I mean, just in the last couple of years uh, really got turned on to a lot of new things. <clears throat> uh, it's good. I mean, new bands playing good sound and death metal, you know what I mean? It's only going to help us old fuckers that are still trying to hang along as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's nice. It's You know, for a while there, I think a lot of bands were really stale trying to do death metal, and, and I hear a lot of fresh, <clears throat> you know, it may be, just sound like the old bands that I that I grew up on I like, but fresh takes on it, and that's all I need, <clears throat> you know. Uh, that and just keep putting out autopsy and immolation records, and I'm fine. <laughs> they can do no wrong. <laughs> yeah. Also, also, I'm looking forward. Hopefully, the new Asphyx is a good one too. Oh yeah, that should be another. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that album, and um, always what uh, Masters. I always like listening to Master. I just love that classic, <clears throat> classic. Um, primitive death metal style too is really cool. Reefert's uh, Violent Wound, they just put out a new record too. I don't know if you got that. No, That's really I good. Hear, uh, if you guys know yeah, that, it it's more 
uh, punk, punk, dirty punk rock. I don't know. Uh, it's just really good. Kind of how I, uh, Abscess started off. It's kind of like how he's got the Violent Womb stuff. It's really cool. It's got quite a few records now. Yeah, I know. Yeah. There are a lot of extreme metal bands that sound a little bit too polished or too perfect. Yeah. yeah. Just a little bit too produced. <laughs> and when you have that nasty punk rock attitude, like the Hellhammer, Celtic Frost, Venom yeah. Yeah. flavor, you can't go wrong. Well, yeah, it's kind of crazy because if you really look at it, the early uh, black metal bands, the early 90s, we're talking about how, uh, you know, a poser, a death metal scene was. And um, probably a good 75% of those bands, the second they had a chance to sell out and be super <laughs> polished, they did, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's, I mean, it's so ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, there's only a few of those old, um, you know, black metal bands that came out, like Marduk that still comes out, and they're still really good. And there's yeah. a few other and ones. Brutal that, and yeah, you know, just, Down to Earth. And, yeah, you know, they're DIY. There's some so. other bands that still have that rough, rough edge to it. Even if they did maybe clean up, they still have that, I guess, that punk rock attitude and in, in with black metal. But a lot of them just, man, they sold yeah. out. Like, unbelievable. I'd be worse than any, almost most <laughs> um, death metal bands sold out back then, you know? So I don't, they, shouldn't have, they shouldn't have been talking so much shit back in the day, just <laughs> yeah. knowing how, how posed they're going to be the second they have the chance, you know? As soon as they see, you know, a, a nice check being written, they're just like, okay, we'll be nice. Yeah. Oh, keyboards? Yeah. Female vocals? Yeah, we never had that before, but sure, hey, we'll throw get it more money? Yeah, more money? <laughs> we'll put it in whatever you want. <laughs> oh, time makes posers of us all, huh? <laughs> yep. So what I want to know is who's your heavy metal hero? As far as guitarist, Tony Iommi. <clears throat> yeah, probably, probably Tony Iommi was the, yeah, yeah. that was the, really the first, probably yeah. one of the first ones that really yeah. did it for me, you know? And then Bill Ward, you know, I mean, there's, there's a, quite a few, but. You have to go down to the yeah. basics. I mean, yeah, if you want to. Pick a number one. I mean, it's just Sabbath all around. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean Tony Iommi. You, you know, yeah. <laughs> when you hear those, when he goes into at some of his Doom riffs and stuff like that, it's just so sick. Yeah, <laughs> and doing that before anybody else is really doing it that way. You know, I mean, <laughs> that's kind of like the uh, the core of almost everything that is any kind of metal, almost <laughs> anything the least bit heavy. <laughs> yeah, came yeah. from those <laughs> that unit. I'm yeah. Talking. Birmingham. Yeah. <laughs> Birmingham. Yeah, Birmingham. Yeah. That uh, is an expected response from a guy that has two Black Sabbath tattoos on his forearms. It's <laughs> <laughs> time to forget. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> Good night. <Good> night. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <shit. laughs> That'd be fucked up by it. Guns and Roses or some shit on there. Right? <laughs> like, oh no, Black Sabbath, man. <laughs> oh, fuck. Tell me about one show from back in the day that is especially brutal, that holds a memory that's special for you guys. Wow, especially brutal. Brutally know. memorable. A brutally memorable, yeah, but they're all for the wrong reasons. <laughs> I mean, that's why they're good stories. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like in the nineties when we were I mean there there's moments. I don't know about a show, but there's so much. Like if we ever finish our book, holy fuck, it's gonna blow some people away. <clears throat> I don't know if we'll ever get it finished, but uh, was, um, just some of those tours. I mean, just like think of Mexico. Big, yeah, yeah. We were I mean, we did three month tours and you know, the summer of ninety five, we we stayed out for three months straight. We took Cataclysm and somebody else for like the first six weeks. Yeah. And then we did jump. Then, then it was, then it was went, Cataclysm, Rachevor, and us in Mexico yeah. for a, about another almost month, three three yeah. weeks or something in Mexico. And this was back, you know, early Mexico, you know. It wasn't like now it's a lot nicer with yeah. the gear and stuff. Back then it was more primitive. They didn't have a lot of yeah. a lot of bands or gear or nothing. That was crazy but stuff. Then, but then we brought Enslaved Over, which was the first Norwegian black metal band yeah. that ever. Them, we did a tour with them and Apsu. Apsu yeah. we took out as well. So there's some, man, there's some crazy stories. On that. But particular show. I, I, I remember the one of Juarez where they, the, uh, it was, it was, the tour with uh, what was it? 
Anal Cunt and Morpheus Descends and Afterlife. Afterlife. Yeah. Who that was? was right before me though. That oh, was with Dwayne and, and uh, it was ninety three. Oh, okay. Dwayne I thought that Brody. Yeah, that was a good one because the pissers um pissers broke in the venue, <laughs> so everyone just started pissing all over the club. <laughs> Because the bathroom floor was so full of piss that no one wanted to go into piss or to piss. And then I, I remember um, Seth from Anilcon, when they played, he he jumped right into the crowd and like rolled around in the piss with that with you know all all the people that you know the people were like moshing in in the uh, sewer water with with Seth rolling around in it and stuff and um that's memorable you know yeah. that's a memory um yeah and then also I, I for some reason i think it was a was that big rob or big ron the guy in um in wichita kansas with the big texas tattoo on his belly yeah uh big big oh, ron? Ron? Uh, ron i don't know anyway he i just remember because we were playing the show and he had one of his waitresses go up between each song and give us a shot of Jägermeister. <laughs> yeah, we were pretty hammered. So by the end of the show. <laughs> show, I mean... He was the promoter. He owned the bar and he promoted the shows there. Yeah. And then he, he was getting us hammered. Yeah. Stage. So by the end of the show, actually I put down my guitar and just fell right on my face <laughs> on the stage. And then I found my way up and, and then... Kyle was settling up with them in the back, and he's like, no one's leaving this room until this brand new bottle of Jägermeister is finished, you know? <laughs> and needless to say, I don't remember nothing except for waking up the next day, piled on, it was Dwayne was in the bath at the time. I was on top of him. There was vomit. There was dirt. There was, I didn't know what happened. I just know I woke yeah. up like, what the fuck happened? And I, 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 little bits and pieces I remember being dragged through the mud or something or I don't know what happened. Yeah. So that, that was a good memory cause I can't remember it. So I figured it was good, you know, got some bad ones. Yeah. A lot of we, bad ones. too. Uh, so we played, <clears throat> I tell you the worst show, the worst attendance show we ever played in our life. <clears throat> what, what was the name of that town? It was Guam State like or? Roy, New York or Rye. Rye. It was Rye. 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 You know, so someplace above, um, above what's that um i can't remember um fuck if I upstate new york yeah play this place nobody plays there apparently <laughs> but so there's a couple of things i remember for one the stage was like 10 feet of fucking air it's almost like an addict in in, the, in this venue it was the fucking weirdest thing i mean literally like 20 fucking feet in the air and one person showed up one <laughs> But the cool thing was, is that he bought merch. So that night, we sold 100% of merchandise <laughs> to, everybody, to that came. everybody that came to the show. Yeah. It was pretty and awesome. And we figured we played a full show. We're like, we, we fuck paid, it, one guy played, paid, and we're going to do we, it, you we know? We the whole fucking show. I think it was like a Monday or whatever, but... <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, but I, I remember the stage. I remember we were just like, really? Ooh. One fucking person? Well, if, you, if you remember correctly... Um, it was in uh, Wyoming. Uh, what was it? What's that? Not Casper. It was uh, Cheyenne. Cheyenne, Wyoming. Yeah, we played a show there once, and it was at a VFW hall. Remember, oh, we, took remember the, we took the pictures with all the funny, all uh, the stuff they had in the yeah, back, and the nights, and because it was it was it was a uh, a night a uh, the, the Knights of Columbus or yeah, whatever. Knights of Columbus. Like yeah, a, like a, that. Oh, yeah. Like a, what are those fucking things called? Yeah. Ah, I can't think of them on the spot. But yeah, so they had all this cool stuff, uh, chain mail. And, yeah, we and took all these sword. pictures, <laughs> kind of, kind of looking like um, enslaved or something like that, you know, yeah. with backstage, which was fun. But the show, I remember, there was, um, I think there was five people showed up to the show, and th the thing that was really great about it, it wasn't even five people from Cheyenne. They traveled all the way from like the middle of Kansas yeah. to come see us. Like they drove like eight hours to see us. <laughs> He's five people, so you know. Nobody local. <laughs> no, but not one local person came to the show. I do remember that. It was just really funny. I was just like, I was like, fuck, dude, you know, we gotta really play our ass off. These guys drove a long way to get to the yeah. fucking show, you know. And those are the shows you play extra hard because you're like, holy fuck, you know what I mean? Like, they. Did, it showed dedication, you know. You know? They yeah. traveled so far for the show. <laughs> and I, you know, 
I just, I couldn't believe it. I mean, if they, we didn't have those travelers from the middle of Kansas, there would have been nobody at the yeah. show. I mean, nobody, nobody. I mean, yeah. I, I figured, well, I know Cheyenne's a small town, but I figured somebody would just by accident, you know, the show's happening. I have nothing. I mean, it is, it is yeah, uh, it crazy, Wyoming, though. you know. The two shows that we just talked about, those weren't even ones that we booked. I, if I recall, those were both like, you know, when we started working with agents, uh, those were booked because I don't, we would have never, yeah, we would have never taken it. There's no way. Well, at least we had some standards when, when we were booking it. There had to be, you know, but it was, <laughs> we, had to have, we had to know somebody to even book the show yeah, there because usually, we would, we, we'd always went off of uh, referrals, you know. Yeah, usually mean? if we book shows, it was <laughs> with like another band from the area, so yeah. you know, there'd be some, there'd be some promotion, you know, or something, you know. Was this, do you remember what year this was? Cheyenne was probably... 96, 97. Yeah, probably. Both, well, no. five at the earliest. The, the one in uh, Albany was on top of Albany was that one show. That was later. That's like 2000. Yeah, that was, that was, a two, that was early 2000s. Yeah. That one, that one in uh, whatever, in New, York. New York. And the yeah. one in, one in Wyoming, yeah, was in... Mid late, later 90s. Like 96, <laughs> probably, something yeah. like that. That's fair. That was actually... That 96 time was a tough, tough time in the U.S. for uh, death metal bands touring. It just the scene just wasn't wasn't so good. Yeah. It, like it, everybody just totally went on the uh, black metal trend then at that time. Yeah, and that stayed for a few years like that. Yeah, <clears throat> that's what I, when I say. They didn't give a fuck about incantation style music. I don't know. You know, I don't think it was so much us, but just death metal. That that style, death yeah. metal. And then a lot of the death metal was yeah. coming out was a lot more like gore grind death metal. Yeah. There wasn't many other uh, traditional style. Even at that time, a lot of bands were on the verge of breaking up. Like uh, you know, I, I don't remember exactly, but I, a bunch of bands like kind of stopped in the later to mid nineties. Yeah. You know. All the bands that have been doing reunions in the last ten years are all the ones that stopped then because it sucked, and now it's popular to be the old fuckers of death metal. So if you were playing in the 90s, yeah. you know, call up fucking Ryan and Evan and we'll put you on Maryland Death Fest. But we, you know? Yeah, but we did it. We, you know, Get those long sleeve shirts printed stat. Yeah, but we wanted, <laughs> but, you know, we looked at it. We, you know, we believe, the, uh, we believe in the music that we do, you know, and it's like we were going to, you know, stop playing yeah. because the scene all of a sudden isn't yeah. going in our favor. It's like, a true musician is going to keep playing regardless. You don't play because, you know, death metal is popular now. You play because you love doing death metal. And if it's popular, that's great. Yeah. But if it if it's not popular at all, it doesn't yeah. make you not like it as much, you know, at least for us. We kept touring and we kept putting out records. We had to keep touring, you know what I mean? We we just, we just acted like, a, you know. Fuck everybody, yeah. opposers. You know, just do our thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm glad to see that after three decades, you haven't shown any signs of slowing down or relenting. So keep up the grim work. And what would you like to say to all the heavy metal hellraisers who are watching at home? Uh, metal. <laughs> <laughs> don't be a poser. Yeah, don't be a poser. Too many posers out there. And if you see this, buy it. Because not only do you need you know real metal in your life, but it'll definitely help because there's a lot of starving artists at home now that you know, yeah, should be out living and on the road. And if people see you with our new album, they're gonna know right off the bat you're not a poser. <laughs> yeah, it'll be it'll it should be a badge of honor that you're not a poser. So, so you get the shirt, you know, you get the bundle package. The shirts, they automatically know, oh, he's no poser. And then when they go and they question you about a song to see if you actually have the record and you had it and you already know it and you answer and they're like, oh shit, this guy's all right. And she rolls the night hack, motherfucker. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, awesome. so you know, just uh, yeah, fucking keep me metal, you yeah. know. So, <laughs> well, thank you, John and Kyle, for making Cantation yeah. your new album. Sect of Vile Divinities will be out in August.